I need to give my thoughts out about The Rise of Skywalker, which I saw at the midnight premiere. I'm probably gonna like delete this video from the channel or move it to my second channel, but for the moment, if I don't get it out now, then I'm never gonna get it out at all. Uh, I've got a page of notes and I'm just gonna talk about my confused feelings. There will be spoilers in this video, I'm not gonna hold back. Um, I'm just gonna talk about anything and everything. Uh, so, The Rise of Skywalker. If you've seen it, let me know what you thought down below. But the first thing that stood out to me, like, unequivocally, was that the whole film felt like a response to the criticisms of The Last Jedi. Like, uh, you know, Rey didn't get enough training to become a powerful Jedi, so the film opens with a training montage. And with Leia being her Force mentor now, she even refers to her as Master, it sort of felt like they wanted to do more with that, but they didn't have the time. So they just sort of shoved it in there to go, hey, there's there's more stuff here, there's more stuff behind the scenes where this is going on. She's got training, she's got, she's got a mentor. Um, but obviously they didn't do that much with it. So they just sort of shoved that in there to, to, to say that, oh yeah, no, she is training. The, the second thing that The Last Jedi was criticized for is, oh, Luke didn't do anything, he was a nobody, he wasn't Luke. But then in this film we learned he's been on, like, adventures, look, looking for Sith hideouts and stuff in the past, because she's got all of his books from when he was, you know, on, on the island, or some of his books. And so he went to find the Sith way marker, or whatever it was called. Uh, and, yeah, I, I found that kind of interesting. Now, like, whether or not you like The Last Jedi, I, I have interesting thoughts on it, but, you know, another one was Ray was a nobody. You know, he, uh, like, Kylo explicitly says, you know, your parents were a nobody, they're nobody, and it's sort of a response to the everyone in Star Wars is connected to one another, everyone's part of the same family. But then in this film, oh, we're back! It, 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 she is a somebody, she's a Palpatine. And I, I didn't, like, dislike that as a concept, necessarily, but it felt like a retcon of The Last Jedi. Like, they even explicitly have this kind of weird side scene where we see that Leia had a lightsaber and used it, and that's why she had force powers in The, force, in, 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 in the Last Jedi. That's why she could do the space thing, because she's a, she's a force person, she's super powerful which wasn't really built up to or anything like that. It sort of felt like it was justifying, after the fact, things that happened in the previous film. So, fundamentally, it felt like a retcon of The Last Jedi, which I'm not a fan of retconning. I, I don't think that even if you sort of misstepped, you should really go back and retcon or try to justify, like, justify it like that. It felt like a continuation, thematically, tonally, characteristically, of The Force Awakens, and not of The Last Jedi. And when you've got basically a whole chapter of your story that you feel you can sort of remove, and then just wedge the bits on the either side in between, it, it comes across as this really disjointed story. So what they're almost doing is, is they're actually making The Last Jedi more redundant than it needed to be. Uh, and I'm not necessarily sure that putting these things in actually still just like still address the deeper problems with the narrative so far. Now I, I don't think that like Rey is a Mary Sue necessarily, but the fact that she had a training montage, like I was watching throughout the film and I was looking for, okay, she's criticized for getting everything first try and always being able to do stuff. And now there's the justification of she's the Palpatine, she's literally one of the most powerful force users ever. But she still never fails, basically. Um, the only time I was looking out for it was at the start of the film and she's fighting the little laser ball that Luke does and she gets shot in the arm and she gets a little bit angry. Um, and that's sort of a callback to Luke being, you know, her struggling with that at the same time. But, in all of the encounters that she has, when she fights Kylo Ren on the desert, when she's, uh, you know, going up against the snake, when she's trying to rescue Chewie, when she's, uh, you know, 
even when she's up against Palpatine, um, she never has any real measurable failure. She never has any point where she's set back probably because of a flaw that she has in her character. Um, that never happened. She pretty much, she, 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 she did manage to kind of overcome most obstacles presented to her in the narrative with relative ease. Um, and that is a problem because, you know, I, I mean, you might say that a flaw of her character is that she's, in, in, uh, she's attracted to the dark side. But I didn't feel she ever really was. And whenever we get to a point of, oh, she's attracted to the dark side, like she was about to go and kill the Emperor and become the Empress, we never really get that that comes from a sense of hate. Like, it really comes from a sense of, I've got to save my friends. It, it, unlike, you know, compare this to when Luke is like, bashing Darth Vader like he's won and he's he's beaten Darth Vader down and then he he realizes holy crap this is what a Sith does Rey never has a moment where she goes holy crap I'm doing what a Sith does out of a sense of anger and misplaced trust and stuff like that so I yeah that was that was just interesting now naturally it would feel like a continuation of the force awakens because it has jj abrams as the director as opposed to ryan johnson and you know they had clearly conflicting visions of where the star wars series was going to go so that is kind of natural but as like a narrative arc it doesn't necessarily work and actually one of the criticisms i had the last jedi is that it didn't feel like it was a continuation of the force awakens it felt like it took place in a different star wars story uh, one of the things I did actually like was Kylo's redemption arc. Um, I bought Kylo being redeemed by the end of the film. I, I, I like, he has, he is clearly the best character in the, uh, in, in, in the series. Um, he's more complex and layered and I'm really convinced by, uh, his performance, even though, you know, like he actually hasn't given that many lines, but he has a presence on screen that isn't like the dominant dark presence of Darth Vader or the Emperor. It's something more complex. And you definitely get the sense that there's a light and a dark inside of him. A struggle that we never really get with Rey. Um, and the, what they did with their relationship, their force relationship, was really clever. The fight scenes where, you know, you get the little snippets between the two of them, the swapping between them, and then at the end when they're like, she gives him the lightsaber through this connection that they have, all very clever, all very interesting. That was a nice payoff to that relationship that they're building up. I was wondering where they were going to go with that. I would have preferred if Kylo and... Uh, Kylo and, and Rey defeated the Emperor together. It, pretty much once they got to the Emperor, the Emperor's just like, Whoa, you're my puppets now. And then, bye, Kylo. And he goes flying down a cliff. And then Rey, and then she defeats him. And, and uh, yeah, and I would have preferred they did it together as sort of, you know, they're finally coming together to defeat, to defeat this great evil that has been supposedly puppeteering it all the time. So if I look really tired and I sound really tired, it's because I literally just woke up <laughs> and I have other work to do. Um, and this kind of goes into a deeper problem, which was that the film had a real sense of contrived tension. Like, all of, a, a lot of the major obstacles in the story just sort of came out of nowhere or, or you're left feeling, what, why, why is that, what, what the problem is? Like at the start, it's a visually stunning scene, you know, with these flashes and Palpatine, like it's convincing and the set pieces, it's beautiful, it's a lovely opening scene. And then suddenly there's this fleet that arises from the planet of hundreds of ships with Death Star, you know, power levels of destroying planets. How? Why? Where did these come from? And I mean, it looks amazing, but I, I, I mean, were, were these ships manned? And 
w w when did the First Order get them? You know? Like, the whole story feels like it takes place over a couple of days. Did the First Order come to the planet and then man it all? Because obviously they're manned at the end of the, at the end of the, um, movie. And I didn't, I just, like, did the Empire have these? Are these leftover Star Destroyers from the original Empire? And if they aren't, then, you know, like, they, they all have planet-killing properties. Why didn't the Empire use those? I just, I just didn't get it. The film even seems to recognize this contrived tension at points. There's a moment where I think it's, uh, Finn, no, Poe, is, is fixing a speeder. And then Poe's just like, how do you know how to do that? Because it's, like, not established that he should be able to do that. Uh, um... And there were a lot of other things, like, oh, all of these rising ships, they need this control tower to do it, or they won't be able to, we need to blow that up. And, I, I, I mean, I just saw, like, okay, so they're just creating a, a weird obstacle there. I mean, it's sort of because, you know, oh, we've got to destroy this port and the Death Star. But, it felt odd. I, I don't quite know how to describe it. Um... Palpatine has all of the Sith inside him, it sort of ramps up this tension of tr trying to convince us that Rey killing Palpatine is going to bring all of the Sith into her, and th th there's like no precedent for that. Um, w one thing that one thing that was cool was, I actually quite liked the healing, I know that's going to be a controversial thing, but th there is force healing in the story. First with the snake, second with Kylo, and thirdly with bringing Rey back from the dead. And it's a callback to, you know, uh, Darth Plagueis the Wise, the ability to manipulate midichlorines. Uh, and he couldn't save himself, but he could save others. And I liked that. I thought that was really well done. Um, it gave... It gave this idea that, you know, dark side powers can be used for good, which leads into, you know, her eventual revelation that she was a grey Jedi, kind of. I mean, it's it's not explicit, it's implicit, because she picks up a, a golden lightsaber rather than, like, a green or blue one. But she's discarding both red and blue and green, which sort of says that we're discarding the, the dichotomy of the Sith and the Jedi. Um... So yeah, I liked the healing. I thought that was good, they set it up, they didn't just come out of nowhere. The first time it was used, it was used relatively inconsequentially. Um, but, once again, when we return to kind of like, oh, she's a Palpatine, that's why she's got Sith powers, we run into this issue of thematically being at odds with The Last Jedi. So The Last Jedi was very much about Forget the past. It's behind us. We will make our own destiny. Come with me. You know, your parents were nobody, Ray. And in this in this film, obviously she is someone. <laughs> so it, it it's sort of going past that and saying, hey, yeah, no, don't worry. Star Wars is still all about those family bloodlines. But then Luke very explicitly says that oh, blood is only one thing. And while I kind of like that they, you know, they, they, they brought it back to, you know, it, it, it's who you choose to be, I think, I'm, I'm not sure making her a Palpatine would have, would have really made that more interesting. I, I don't know my thoughts on it yet, but... It feels like they're trying to, to kind of work two visions, Ryan Johnson's and J.J. Abrams, into one another. Uh, and I don't think that it was planned all along, necessarily, for Rey to be a Palpatine. There weren't, like, any strong hints of it in the previous two films. But the, 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 the tension in the film is ultimately derived from Palpatine being a threat, supposedly. And I'm not sure that was the best decision. It would have been far more interesting to make the First Order themselves the ultimate threat. And that's what I thought they were going to do. Because at the beginning of the film, they introduced this character called General Pride. Uh, who is kind of a Tarkin-esque character. He seems to have a presence. He seems to be able to talk back. But then suddenly they just sort of cut him off at the legs. 
General Hux is there as well, and what's really interesting is that they make him a spy. They make him turn, and there's this moment where he says, you know, I don't care if you win, I just want Kylo Ren to lose. And that's kind of an interesting thing to do with a character. And we see there's a growing tension between, you know, the First Order and the, the Knights of Ren and Kylo Ren. And I thought they were going to build that out until eventually the First Order sort of betrays him, especially as he's sort of like teetering on between the light and the good and doesn't quite know what to do. And they didn't do that. Instead, like the moment that General Hux became even slightly interesting as a character beyond just kind of being a joke, they killed him. Literally, he was a spy, and then, and then they shot him in the chest. General Pride turned around and shot him in the chest, which was a fine move for General Pride. But then General Pride wasn't made any much of a threat either. General Pride was basically just a, a, a glorified stand-in character for Hux once he was gone. And he was just slightly more intimidating. But they didn't do anything with that. And that was annoying. It felt like the First Order was just there to to create goons for the bad side, rather than being a, a real threat themselves, when they had the potential to be that. You didn't really need Palpatine to, to have that kind of side of tension. They could have developed uh, they could have developed uh, Pride as a more formidable character who led the charge against Kylo Ren, and. Then we've got kind of this interesting three-way dynamic between Rey, Kylo, and General Pride, with General Hux kind of thrown in the middle there, and he'd have a great moment at the end. So, yeah, I, I was kind of looking looking for that, but it, it just didn't happen. It just never came uh, to any eventuality at all. <clears throat> and I do want to say that the whole film is shot beautifully. Like, it has so many moments where it looks amazing and you really feel like this is a unique location and Star Wars has always been really really good at that. Um, I especially liked you know the fallen Death Star world I think it was Endor I, I don't really know also like there's this icy floating iceberg spaceship right at the space port right at the start uh, and you know, yeah it, it, it all looked really really beautiful exegol was also stunning even though we didn't get to see much of it but i had this grand deep dark ancient feel to it i loved it but yeah none of these fix the deeper problems with the story and so we've talked about how the tension just wasn't as good as it could have been or it felt contrived but let's talk about the emotion like the emotional scenes, the things that were meant to make us cry and, and feel. And the one that stood out to me was C-3PO having his memory wiped. Now, this should have been one of the most emotional scenes in Star Wars. But they didn't do anything with it. He even has this moment where he says, I'm hey, taking one last look at my friend. And then... The next moment, there's just this kind of joke as he goes, Bleh. um, and then they give him his memory back. It felt like a, a thing that they could have done so much more with, and I didn't feel anything. Even in the way that they did it. Even if they brought his memory back, they could have made that initial moment a lot more meaningful. And they didn't. So, that kind of sucks. <laughs> I think the emotional moments between Rey and Kylo worked pretty well. I think Kylo's mask, you know, with the shattered red, looked pretty damn cool. The choreography, though, for the fight scenes was bad. Like, wow. Uh, they were not immersive. They were slow, and they were laborious and it looked like it looks like when you know actors are like swinging to hit each other's blades and not each other so they're going okay we're gonna go over here then we're gonna go over here then we're gonna go over here I was waiting for a lot more fast paced lightsaber battles a lot more um interesting lightsaber battles and they they did that's another thing that they sort of felt like they were addressing the criticisms of uh the last Jedi there are no lightsaber battles so now there's like six of them none of them 
did anything that interesting. The the fight scene up above really see so this is over above Exegol, so this is with all the Star Destroyers and all the Rebellion arrives. Once the Rebellion arrives, we don't really get any sense of what's going on up there. You know, uh, it, it's very common for Star Wars films, or just, you know, sci-fi fantasy films in particular, to have the main character off somewhere, and then they're learning that, oh, your friends are dying, and then you get a slow motion music play out. And Finn, Rose and Finn trying to, like, uh, blow up this tower thing. But I'm, 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 I'm not sure that was enough. Like, I wanted to see, I wanted to be following someone in a spaceship and have them trying to do something. Uh, but not being able to, and then eventually managing to, you know, having their own arc throughout this battle, instead of just seeing snippets of it where things are happening. So, that's kind of my feelings on The Rise of Skywalker. I know it's been a ramble, um, but, I, I, yeah, it, it was just not as good as it could have been. I feel like they could have done it a lot more simply with just kind of a triangle between First Order, Kaio, and Rey, and developed villains in the First Order. Uh, also, where does the First Order get its money from? Like, the Empire was a governing body, and I, I don't think the First Order is a governing body. At least it's not clear that it is. Um, they seem more like a very, very expensive terrorist organization. Like, I enjoyed it in the moment. And, you know, that's fine. That is a good bar to hit for a film. And it looked good, which a lot of films don't. But I came away with it with just a feeling of unsatisfaction. Like, this should have been more. And for a movie with... I don't know, I'm gonna guess $300 million thrown at it. I was hoping for that. But yeah. Anyways, I'm probably gonna delete this video from my channel, move it to my second channel to the future, because it's just a rant. But let me know your thoughts down below. Merry Christmas, because this will possibly be my last video of the year. And uh, stay nerdy, and I'll see you in the future.